Okay, I'm going to have a crack at a uh, globe knot. This is almost the same as the one described in Des Pawson's eight strand bell rope um, as his fancy globe. Uh, he proceeds his with a um, walnut, wall knot, and uh, has the same 954 on the end. He also extends his walnut and um, puts a ball inside. We won't be doing that. When you um, proceed the 954 with a diamond, you get quite a thick knot anyway. So I don't, uh, I don't like putting a ball in unless I have to. Um, okay, we start with eight strands. They're all alternating colours, which makes for an easy uh, explanation. Start with a diamond. You put one up like that and just hold it there with your thumb. Now this is your first working end. Go over that one and under that one. Hold the unders in your fingers so you know you've done them. Now you move on to this one. Don't pull it through. It's got to stay up here like that because we need that for later. It stays up. So you go over and then under. Next one, over, under, over, under. Hold it in your fingers. Okay, so next one, over, under, over, under. Hold it in your fingers, get it out of the way. Next one, over, under, over, under. Next one, over, under. Next one, over. Now we're back round to the beginning. So you go over this one and under that one. So over, under. Now the reason we left that loop up so that we don't lose it. We go over that one and under that one by going through the loop. So over and under. Now we just pull this one that we left up. We just pull it tighter. Okay, so that's your diamond basically done. Try and make these all about the same length. We don't want to pull it up tight yet because we're going to double it, so we need a bit of space. How's that looking? Not too bad. Okay, now for the 954. So we open everything up. Everything up nice and even. Now with the 954, if you're using alternating colours like this, you can determine whether you want the darker as the centre square or the lighter as the centre square. If you have the darker as the centre square, you'll have light around the outside or vice versa. In this case, I think I might put the, uh, I might put the light colour in the centre. Um, so you start with the light one. You've got to go across three strands anti-clockwise with your start. So one, two, three. Go across three, keep it raised so it's still up and hold it under your fingers. Now from that, you started with that one, you have to count backwards. Because we're using colors, I could just say go to the previous white one. But if you're not using alternating colors, you'll need to count. So you start at this one, which you've just used, and you count back one, two. So that is the one you're going to use next. You have to go over three again. One, two, three. Hold it under your fingers. Now that was the one we just used. So we count one, two, back again. Go one, two, three. Lay that down there. So we're going to be making a square shape. Okay, now that was the one we just tied. So we go, you don't count that, that's a tail. 
So we count back two, one, two, that's our last one. Now this is our last one. We've still got a cross three, which is one. We don't count that because it's a tail, it's not a base. So one base, two base, three base. We've got to put it in there, so we put it in there. But you've got to go underneath that first one, which is a tail. See how that one's a tail? Got to go under that one. Keep them loose and down into that. So this one, which we just tied, we went over that one. We didn't count that because that's a tail. Went over that one and over that one. So it's still going over three. So now we've got our square in the middle. Now, as you can see, if we let it go, all these will just flop out because there's nothing holding them down, which is what the outside crown does. The uh, 954 is basically two crowns interwoven. There's a center crown, which is this, which is currently loose because it's not locked. And the outside crown, which is your darker colors. The outside crown's job is to lock down these loose ones. So we basically go in a still in an anti-clockwise direction, cross that one to lock it down, and through the next one there. So through there, straight down. So now that one's locked down with that, can't go anywhere. Next one, that one needs to be locked down. So this one that it's next to goes through there. Often the bases get pulled into the center there. Just pull it out a little bit so you can tuck your next one through. Through there. Okay, turn your piece around. This is your next floppy one. It goes over, and again, the base is sort of hidden under there. See how it's pulled back? You just got to pull it out a little bit so you can get a loop in there. This one crosses over that to lock it down, and through that next one. Your last one, that's locking that one down. But there's your base in there. See, it's hidden away. So you just pull it out again. Okay, so over that one and through that one. Now that's your 954. You just tighten it up a little bit, not too much, but just take that bit of slack out. You can see every one of the tails is locked down by another crossing piece, so it all works. Okay, now we have to double it. We might even triple it, I'm not sure, we'll see how we go. Um, I like to double it below the lead. So this is our working end, our tail. That's where we all started from. That's your base. So that one we now go on full circuit and we have to follow this around again. So put it down below it because it makes for a bulkier knot. And go around and do that to all of them. This one is coming out there the same as this one. Put it down below, down below, down below, down below. You can move these around later because they'll they're bound to come loose. But okay. Now let's start doubling one of them. Pull all these out of the way. Okay, so this one, I, th I think of it this being a bridge, and you've got two lines coming out from under the bridge. Those two lines have got to stay parallel. So this is your lead, which we have to follow. See how it's going, wanting to push onto the top, just make sure you keep it parallel and keep it below the lead. And I don't carry on at this point, I go around and do every one. So that one goes below the lead, and through there. This 
This is much easier to do in hard laid chord because it's nice and stiff. Um, I don't really use paracord. I imagine this would be a bit of a pain, but um, I'm sure you guys are used to it. Um, so again, parallel with that one, down through there. So we've got parallel, parallel, parallel. This one again, it's jumped up onto the top, so keep it below that lead. Keep it below the lead, down there. Three to go. parallel down below that loop sorry if I'm drifting out of frame sometimes yeah cameras up high I can't really see what the picture is um, last one okay so we've started the doubling just parallel, 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 parallel. Eight of them. Um, now we just carry on. So these two are coming down here. We just follow this one around and up into here. This is when you start to need your spike to pull these up. To the next one. So the next one's a dark one. Around the bottom, follow it up. Around the bottom, follow it up. Dark one, pull that up. Okay, see, let's come down here, follow this one around. Again, let's come down here, follow it around. Dark one. And a light one. There's nothing tricky about this part of it really. You've just got to follow the lead. Stay on the same side of it the whole time. So you always stay below or to the right. Um, you can cross over every turn if you want and it will work but it will just be as ugly as sin um, so keep it nice and neat and parallel okay that's the this part of here is the diamond knot so we are basically doubled the diamond now we're about to double the 954 which is the top here so you see how those are all symbols they haven't been doubled yet so you just follow it through because the, the diamond 
becomes part of the 954 effectively. They're just basically leading into each other. Um, okay, so the center is the light one, so we'll do those first just for the sake of it. No particular reason to do either one or the other, but um, the ones across the center take a longer path. The ones on the outside are a shorter path because they just loop around and go back down into the diamond. Okay, now this is where we start to decide. For the sake of not taking too long, I'm going to double this, not triple it, but I'll show you what you do if you triple it. Um, carry on doing it parallel. I'll just do part of that for the sake of this first one. Okay, now we've doubled it to there. I obviously have to go under this one because that's following the lead. If I follow the lead then down through here, I will then have tripled it. And if I want to triple it, which is fine, you then just keep going all the way around until you get back to here. In which case, if you follow it around again, you'll do it four times, which is too big and it won't fit. You might fit three, but uh, you won't fit four. I don't, I've never seen a four one anyway. Um, I'm going to stop at two, just for the sake of time. So, this is the fun part. You put it through there. But you don't want to do that because that automatically makes it a triple. See, I know there's three of them. So we still got to go under because we're only one, one on this side and two on that side. So we have to go under. But instead of going up into that, we go all the way under and right out the bottom. So basically, you're diverting your path and sneaking out the bottom. So now it looks, once there's another line over there, like for that for instance, once that's there, it'll look like just two's following on, but one of them is actually leaving out the bottom. Do the same here. This is follows up here. We go into there. Now again. If we were to follow that through and up, we'll have tripled it. So we have to go under and then keep going under everything to become right out the bottom. Do the next one, it's the same. Again, I've got to go under this one because that's where this one goes. The lead goes under, so we have to go under, but we keep going under. And stick it right out the bottom. Okay, one last. Where is it? Here we are. One last one to go in the centre. That's your centre square. So this effectively is a crown knot. And it's locked in position by another crown around the outside. Under everything and out the bottom. Okay. That's the centre part finished, apart from tightening up. Now, the red ones don't go as far, because they just go up here and then back down into the diamond. So at this point, as you can see, I've got to, this is the lead, so I've got to follow the lead. If I follow it and come out there, I'll have then tripled it, because there'll be three there. So at this point, I go under everything. Still going under those because the lead goes under those, so I have to follow the lead. But I don't want to follow it up into here because that'll triple it. So sneak it under the bottom and take it out the bottom. Same again. So I'm going under there because I have to follow the lead. 
but you follow it and then you divert and go all the way underneath. Again, follow the lead under those white ones because that's the way it goes. But divert and go right through the bottom. This one. So lead follows under those two white ones because that's where the lead goes. Follow the lead but then divert and go all the way through. Okay. Just needs tightening up. Okay, back again. Now, I've done all the tightening because uh, Watching somebody tighten a knot is too tedious. So that's it finished. Got the uh, square of the solid colour because we did a diamond around the edge. That means all the colours line up again. Um, if you do a wall around the edge, a wall is just an under and then you go into the knot. So by going just under, your colour goes your dark colour will go into the next colour slot, which is a light colour. So you will have dark and light on all these lines. Because we did a diamond, it goes over and under. So you're back onto the same colour. So that's why these colours line up again. Um, if you went an over two diamond, you would go back over to the next colour again, so you would again have um, mixed colours all the way through. Both of them look nice, there's not one way to do it, it's whatever you like. Um, diamonds build behind where they start, and the diamond, that's where it starts, that's the top of there, that point of there is where the first line comes out of the crowning. So the crowning finishes up here. When you do a diamond, it builds behind where it starts. So inherently, the knot is bulkier because it's built on top of this crowning. If you do a wall, the wall builds in front of where it starts. So, and there's nothing in there in front, it's just space. So when you pull it tight, it's much smaller. Um, so that's why I like to use a diamond first, gives it more bulk. Um, by using a diamond you don't need to fill it basically because you've already filled it, you've filled it with uh, your own crowning. Anyway, that's it. I um, hope you've learnt something. I always learn something when I teach these things, so um, I'll just trim it. Basically I put the clippers in and pull it tight so that when you clip a little bit of it, it will spring back in a little bit and it will hide itself. You can go through, and sometimes I do, with a dab of glue and then push them back up under. Um, it's not completely necessary, but if you want to be exact. I make all this cord myself. There's a uh, link to where you can buy it in the comments section below. Um, I basically learnt all this from Miko Snellman's videos, which are fantastic. Um, there'll be a link to his. Uh, site below as well because he also makes these beautiful tools um, so contact him if you want one of these or many other tools they're divine hand makes everything